Hello you. <laughs> we haven't spoken in a very long time. I haven't made a video on this channel since April, I think. And there are many reasons for that. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. I am going to address what happened <laughs> that led me to making an apology video. What happened after I made the apology video and why I took a very long break from making English teaching videos and an even longer break from making vlog vlogs. And I'm also going to talk about how I massively messed up with Black Lives Matter as well. Um, I did something really stupid and I'm really embarrassed about it and I would like to talk about it so that maybe other people can not make that same mistake. This is not going to be like my normal vlogs. Um, normally I'm really happy in my videos and I'm not going to lie, I have not been happy recently. Um, don't misunderstand me. I'm not unhappy all the time and I have had moments of happiness but compared to how I used to feel, um, yeah, mental health took a bit of a, a bashing recently but I'm sure many people have been struggling with this as well but yes, this video is me by my windowsill. It's raining, I didn't even plan for it to rain but it's just adding so much to this video. <laughs> But no, I'm, I'm making this video for you, and for me, obviously, but definitely for you because when I follow someone, and I follow a lot of people on YouTube, I like to know about their ups and their downs. And, you know, I portray this really happy, lovely image of life in the English countryside, and everything's great. And it was great. It wasn't me lying or anything. Uh, but, pff, but I've had a rubbish time, and now it's time to talk about that. So let's start off with the the um, apology video and what led up to that. And basically I had made a video called 10 words that you should avoid mispronouncing if you want to sound professional. This video has now been removed, um, just in case you're looking for it, it's, it's gone. And a famous online newspaper had made an article about this video. Then on Twitter, a group of sociolinguists saw a big problem with it. Uh, that I didn't see at the time, but I do see now, which is the implication that if you do not pronounce things with my accent, I speak with modern received pronunciation with a hint of estuary. If you don't speak like me, then you're not professional. And I could see how that could be taken from that video. So anyone with a northern accent who pronounces the words that I, that I was talking about in a different way, uh, not professional. And the issue is that that is a hot topic at the moment. Um, for a long, long time, newsreaders in the UK had one accent, the RP, received pronunciation accent. And when people with regional accents would speak on TV, there would be complaints. If you find a regional accent hard to understand, I kind of think it's because you haven't listened to a diverse enough range of accents. There's a reason why in English listening exams, they use a variety of accents because it's your responsibility to make sure that you understand that variety and you know when you've got the whole of the UK listening to one accent every morning on the news yeah of course they're gonna find other accents unappealing or difficult to understand and that's got to change and it is changing so I can see the links from my video to that someone also found a video that I had made years ago when I had just started the channel in 2016 with Anna from English Like a Native. Anna is a good friend of mine. And um, that was the first time we'd met. We decided to make a video on Northern versus Southern accents. And Anna, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, and I'm sorry, Anna, if I get this wrong, is from Manchester. Um, but when she was training to become an actress, she adapted her accent to be more Southern. And the way we did this video was just so wrong we were kind of in we thought we were making a fun comparison you know northerners say it like this southerners say it like this when actually the tone of it was really off it was like saying 
don't worry if you've got a nasty northern accent you can change it to a lovely southern one which is not what we not what we meant to say at all uh but it definitely came across that way and i can imagine any i mean my sister-in-law to be <laughs> is northern and I, i'm just feeling if she ever watched that how would she feel about me and about the way i seem to feel about northern northern accents i hadn't watched that video since i uploaded it and when i saw clips of it on twitter i thought oh my word i am i need to talk to these people <laughs> and i also saw some other comments you know people saying you know have you brought this up with lucy and people were saying no she makes a fortune off it she wouldn't care and i do care i do care a lot so i reached out to the the person that was really angry and he was a very he is sorry he's still with us <laughs> he is a very well respected academic works in a university and i contacted him and said i totally agree with you these videos completely miss the mark especially the southern versus northern one would you be up for for meeting on zoom and having a chat about how i can continue to teach pronunciation because that's what I love doing and that's what I know my students love but without belittling or dismissing um regional accents and um and he said yes and we had this wonderful chat um I learned so much from him lots of other people reached out to help me as well just really nice Re a really nice result we apologized to each other um, he said, you know, he should have contacted me personally. He shouldn't have called me out in that way without even... Because it, this was a days old conversation that I only saw later because I wasn't tagged in any of the tweets. And these presumptions made about me and the way I am. And, and it was just an experience that I really learned from. So yeah, I loved the way that ended. I didn't like the way it started, but I loved the way it ended. And... I remember just going up to my room and thinking, God, those were an intense couple of days, receiving a lot of criticism from people I respect. There's a lot of academics, people who work in universities, people who have dedicated their life to linguistics and sociolinguistics. People who are far more educated on the topic than I am. And I went to bed a couple of evenings after, because this happened over a couple of days, and just thought, oh, I'm so glad that's over. And I'm also glad it's happened. And I felt good. I had some great videos planned. I was really excited about them. I had been promising a haircut to one of the guys who works on the farm. And poor guy, he's got really thick, blonde, curly hair that was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was really, really hot. And um, he had been asking you know would you mind giving me a haircut would you mind and i've been promising it and then when this twitter thing happened i put it off and then i was there in the barn getting my stuff ready ready to give him a haircut and i got a text have you seen this video on youtube and i thought oh no and someone said you better go and watch it now so i said i'm so sorry uh let me just give me five minutes just to see what's what's going on and it was another english youtuber who i will be so upset if anyone goes to him and says anything nasty because we have sorted out our differences now we are in frequent contact and i really understand why he did what he did and i have spoken openly with him about how i don't like how he did it and i would be surprised if he did something in that way again um i think we all deserve chances to learn from what we do I think everyone deserves a bit of freedom to make, to make mistakes and not just be ruined for it. Oh, so this video had me in the thumbnail. It's a picture of me. Um, it had why I'm angry with Lucy in the title. And it was a video all about this, this video that I had made about don't avoid, the, avoid mispronouncing those words if you want to sound professional and how it could make people feel. And, um, and just the issues related to that video. And when I saw it, I was devastated. I was really, really devastated. And one of the big the big things that I felt at the beginning was, why didn't he come and talk to me about this? And then I realized I have made it literally impossible for anyone to contact me directly. Uh, because 
when you've got lots of followers, it gets really overwhelming. If anyone wants to contact me, they have to go through my manager. I don't have a personal email that you can use to contact me. Um, my private messages are closed on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. If you, ha if you want to contact me, you have to do it publicly. And I'd always thought that that was just something that was protecting me when actually it failed me because this guy had reached out to me in the past and I never got that message and I never replied to him, obviously. And I'm sure lots of other English teachers have also reached out to me and not had a response and felt ignored when actually they just weren't getting through. And I imagine I've made loads of people feel, you know, that I think that I'm better than them and that they're not worth my time. And that's just not the case. It is so challenging to manage everything. It really is. And I got completely overwhelmed a couple of years ago and that's why I don't handle my emails anymore. Um, I can't tell you how many emails I was getting um, and direct messages and Facebook messages. I was getting a lot of collaboration requests and I was finding it quite awkward uh, because I didn't always want to do collaborations. I just got to the point where I thought, right, that's it, I'm switching off. No more collaborations unless it's my idea, <laughs> basically, which I know is wrong. I know is wrong, but it was overwhelming. And, um, and I found it really, because you can't tell what someone's intentions are when they send you a random message and you don't know how many other people they've sent it to and whether they just want to, you know, get, get followers basically. Um, I've done some amazing collaborations that have just been so much fun. And I've had some situations where I have got myself into a collaboration and then I've removed myself from it because I've realized this person is trying to use me. So yeah, this guy had contacted me and I had never seen it. Um, he hadn't contacted me directly about this video as far as I'm aware. And something else that was really hard to see was other English teachers sharing this video and taking a lot of pleasure in it because I didn't think, I didn't think our industry was like that. I really didn't. I've seen all the rivalry and kind of the beauty and makeup communities and sometimes in the gaming and commentary community as well, my word. And um, I just, I didn't think our community was like that. I really didn't. And I was really sad, sad to see it. And don't get me wrong, I have done my fair share of talking behind people's backs. I absolutely have. It's something I really, try not to do anymore. I have said horrible things behind people's backs and a lot of it came from envy or from a place of wanting to protect my myself and my channel and my business uh, and it's definitely something that I'm really not worried, not as worried about anymore and if I feel worried or you know annoyed or frustrated with something that I've seen, maybe someone has ripped off one of my videos or something like that, then I just talk about it with Will and that's it. That's as far as it goes. When in the past, I would really take things like that to heart. Um, it used to really annoy me when people would replicate my videos <laughs> and then contact me for a collaboration. Uh, when now, I understand it. I get it. It's the way YouTube works. Uh, there, there's a scale of it. <laughs> um, and I've definitely gone up and down that scale myself um it's just a, a learning journey but yeah that was the hardest thing about it all oh hey <laughs> future lucy here i'm just editing this video and i realized that well i've mentioned you know the teachers that i felt really took pleasure in in the criticism but i also haven't mentioned all of the amazing people that did actually reach out to me people i have never spoken to before but i've seen on youtube and people that agreed with the criticism and people that said openly to me, you know, I have thought some of your videos missed the mark in the past, but they did it in such a nice way. And it, it's put me in contact with so many more amazing linguists, teachers, professionals that I, that I just wouldn't have met otherwise. So naughty me 
for just looking at the negative there. That's a, that's a habit. That is a habit that needs to end because really good things came of this as well. So I apologized to the farm worker and said, I'm so sorry, I can't cut your hair. I'm having a bit of an emergency. And he just walked off with his hair. <laughs> he actually did it himself in the end and he did a really good job and I feel so bad for letting him down. But I decided that I wanted to make an apology, public apology. I know that I could tell by the comments on the criticism video that a huge percentage of people didn't agree with the contents of the video and by the comments on my apology video I can see that 98% of people thought that I didn't need to make it and thought it was ridiculous but that apology video wasn't for them. I think half a million people watched that pronunciation video that I took down. If 1% of people that watched that video were made to feel less than or offended by it that's still 5,000 people and imagine them standing in front of you, 5,000 individuals that felt rubbish about themselves because of something I've made. I had to apologise. The issue was that the following day was Will's birthday and I had, ha I had spent quite a long time planning it and I had his parents coming over and his brothers and, and I, di I just didn't want to ruin the day for him. So I filmed the apology video at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I meant every word I said if I could change one thing about the apology video I would add in that you know if you weren't offended by the video that's fine but this apology isn't for you because I think a lot of people were confused by that you know why are you apologizing to me I wasn't ever offended it doesn't mean I'm disregarding you or your feelings uh, it just means that the apology was directed towards someone else and that the next video will be for you the guy who made the criticism video and I met on zoom and we had such a good long conversation it was like two hours <laughs> it was so needed i i needed to talk about all of these things and i brought up my issues that i had with his video and how he did things and you know he brought up his issues with my content and things like that and and that was a private conversation so i'm not going to go into it but i can say that i like this person i think he is a good person and I think he was trying to make a difference. And I think my face and name were used to make an impact. Um, which was hard. I, underst I understand why, yeah, I understand it. I understand it. I was very open with him and said, I think you could have done that in a better way. And, um, but hindsight is a wonderful thing, isn't it? So after all of this, I just felt really sad really really sad and I know that I am too sensitive but you just you can't choose <laughs> what what affects your mental health and this really hit me hard it was the realization that some people really wanted to see me fail and because I just never I'd been so naive and I'd really protected myself Whenever you go to a YouTube conference and there's always a section on how to deal with trolls, how to deal with haters, they say block them out, don't read them. Add filters with the worst words like, I don't know, fat, ugly, for example, block them out. And uh, so I did and just made it so that the time I spent on the internet interacting with my viewers was good positive time. And of course the odd one slipped through, uh, but I actually think I took it too far because I didn't see necessary criticism and I just carried on doing my thing uh, without listening to what people had to say. What people didn't realise that was going on at this time was that one of Will's relatives who we both care very deeply for, she was someone that was really looking forward to our wedding and we tried everything we could to make the wedding not be postponed so that she'd have a chance to come and she passed away really quickly and Will just got and Will was just able to nip in to the home once to say goodbye for half an hour it's just so cruel it's just so cruel 
that was going on as well. So that was another reason why I didn't want to vlog because I didn't feel like it was fair to wave a camera in Will's face whilst this was going on and whilst he was grieving as well afterwards. I... So a lot of things are not quite back to normal yet. So you know I love cooking. Well, when this all happened, I kind of hit this rock bottom of feeling really sad. It was my birthday and I just couldn't stop crying. I went to see my parents and I was just trying to hold it together for them. <laughs> and it was just rubbish. And um, yeah, so I love cooking and I just couldn't, it's not that I couldn't be bothered. I just didn't have the energy. And I still don't love cooking yet, which is worrying me because that's one of my passions and that's part of my, it's like my character. You know, Lucy loves cooking. Well, Lucy doesn't love cooking at the moment and she's trying to claw it back. <laughs> pleasure was kind of taken out of running as well and I just felt like I was doing it just because it's what I do rather than what I love really weird and I'm, sh and I'm sure that anyone who has struggled with their mental health will be able to relate just losing passion for things that you used to enjoy Will was amazing throughout all of this he picked up where I let go basically and um, a huge thing was anxiety from my social media notifications. <laughs> I felt nervous every time I opened Twitter, just in case there was something else. Um, I felt really nervous on Instagram, for example. So I didn't post anything for a long time. I did post for Black Lives Matter. And I, of course, stand by that post. Another thing that happened was my mistakes with Black Lives Matter. Uh, this is really awkward to talk about. It's really uncomfortable. But I had been reading all of these posts on social media saying, you know, amplify melanated voices, share black creators, you know, do your bit. I was thinking, yes, I want to do my bit. I want to help out. And I just went about it in totally the wrong way. And looking back, ugh, why was I so tone deaf? I reached out to three black English teachers and I said to them, I would love to share your work on my Instagram and social media. And I was thinking, I'm doing something nice here, something helpful, when actually it really wasn't that at all. That was tokenism as far as I understand the term. It wasn't that I had just picked three creators because they were black. These were three creators that I thought were awesome. And, and they're very unique. They're very unique. Each does something completely different. And they were people that I wanted to get to know as well. And one of the creators came back to me and said, you know, yeah, that's really nice, thank you. Um, and then we did talk later on and I said, just want to broach the fact that I actually approached you in a really rubbish way and I'm really sorry. <laughs> and he was honest and said, yeah, to be honest, I did kind of do a bit of a double take when you contacted me like that, but I could see it came from a good place. So I really appreciated that. And, the, and then um, the second creator politely declined and I can understand why. Um, and then the third creator was really upset, really upset. And I understand why. And they basically said, look, there needs to be stages here. I've gone ignored for ages and suddenly you want to share my stuff. And I totally understand that. I would be offended too. I would be so offended. And I didn't even think of that. So I'm gonna be honest. That experience kind of made me scared <laughs> to do any more. And I've just ended up having lots of conversations um, with creators from all over the world, but making sure that I definitely include conversations with black creators as well. And just seeing how I can do things to help, not just right now because it's a fad, but long term, over time. Um, and that's what I want to do. 
and that's what I'm planning to do. Plans are already in place. Um, I don't want to just do something for the sake of it because it's in the news. What I would like to achieve is something steadier, something that is just positive over time without tokenism. I want people of colour to have fair opportunities and to be seen more and to be heard more but I also don't want to just make people feel like I'm talking to them because of the colour of their skin. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to work through that. So that's my story. I'm really embarrassed and it was uncomfortable to talk to you about this because I feel like a, an idiot basically. Uh, I was trying to do something nice and I just did it in such a bad way. So how are things gonna change going forward? Well, not too much. Um, Twitter is too much of a scary place for me at the moment. Um, people just seem to be jumping on people and attacking people without knowing the full story and that really scares and upsets me. People are just so quick to judge and to shout and to bring someone down. It's like doing a crime and asking for forgiveness rather than doing the right thing. Um, people are quick to attack and then apologize rather than just learning the full story and doing the right thing. I'm using Instagram slightly less. I'm thinking of setting up a separate English teaching Instagram um, to keep that apart from my at Lucy one. Because I know a lot of people go to my Instagram and are disappointed that there's no English content there when, when perhaps they are looking for that kind of thing. Um, and then I'm still uploading once a week to YouTube on English with Lucy and I have no plans to change that. The break was good for me because I, I wouldn't have been much fun on camera, I tell you that. And I'm feeling a lot better. I am feeling a lot better. I have some exciting things happening that I can't wait to talk to you about. Really nice things. And I'm going to continue working hard, continuing, continue trying to vlog and trying to be honest with you as well. And I am going to try to be less afraid to share how I feel. Um, because sometimes I don't share how I feel because I don't want to make someone else feel bad. Like for example, the guy who made that video, I didn't want to tell him how sad it all made me because I didn't want him to feel bad. <laughs> but I thought about that and I thought, no, that's just silly, I've got to be honest. I'm also trying to strike the balance between ignoring people who just have only negative things to say and allowing criticism to be made that I can listen to um, because I just put down a wall <laughs> and nothing could get through and I'm trying to make, I'm trying to come up with a way of making a filter so that the right criticism can get through and I think that might involve having some help from someone who can just pass me the criticism and maybe we'll do like a weekly roundup of it or something. It sounds ridiculous, but can you think of a better way? Because I can't, I can't sit and read everything every evening. I think I've said everything that I need to say now. And the next vlog will be back to documenting my life and, and telling you things about that and my exciting announcement. <laughs> that will play a big part on this channel, not on my English with Lucy channel. And yes, if you're watching this, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for all the messages you know, asking me where I am, asking me if I'm okay. Anyway, I will talk to you soon.